two. And when you do part two, you should do anticipate seeing more than one object. That's uh, how I've done the set, uh, decided which question goes into part one and which question goes into part two. So I think I'm all set. Let me just make sure I'm on the right path. As I keep saying, 20 minutes of time is a really short amount of time, even for me. So uh, I'm starting at 12.32. I have until 12.52 or so. Okay, so let me start. Right. Uh, okay, so this is the question. Um, and I think uh, I, so here the, it looks like I'm describing the, oh wait, so here actually, right, because this is a textbook uh, image. So I've copied a textbook out of text for this thing. So, um, so yeah, if this image somehow didn't show, then this might help you. But do let me know that wherever you see me just not showing because uh, it's an old problem that I've been fixing and I might have missed the one or two things here and there. This question obviously is fixed, so it's fine. Let me just work through this. It says, as shown, two blocks there, yeah, on a level table, connected by, M has coefficient of friction of large with a table. And oh, this is frictionless, okay. I think we have a homework question that looks like this, um, similar, but I think this is a little bit different, so um, you need to work it out again. So A, assuming that the two blocks slide as, of, yeah, okay. It says assuming that they slide, so it's telling you that whatever friction forces there are, it's kinetic friction. That's a little bit helpful. So, so let me just write down that as a reminder. Because uh, when it's static, you gotta go through more logic to figure out are they sliding or you know is it at the limit or not. We <laughs> did this in lab. Uh, describe the forces on the free body diagram of the two blocks clearly. Okay, so I need to. So I'm it's, question is trying to guide me through the standard strategy. So uh, step number one, drawing free body diagram is what I sh should be doing, even if the question didn't ask me to. And since it asks me to, I will do it doubly. So I have free body diagram of, uh, let me start out with the block that's on the left. I have a um, big block, 2M. Um, so as I think through it, so there's always gonna be gravity. So let me draw a gravity down, 2MG. And I uh, go through this uh, uh, question with myself. <laughs> Did I draw all the forces? Just the gravity being downward, it just looks wrong. It's not accelerating downward. That's where I should realize, oh, there's a normal force, N2. And as I stare at it and ask myself the question again, did I draw all the forces? And it should look wrong to you because um, it did say two blocks a slide. So you should have some intuition that this whole thing should be accelerating to the right and nothing I've drawn here allows me to do that. So that's where you realize, oh, there's a string attached to here. So I should have some kind of tension force that's uh, pulling it to the right. So good. And let me do block M on the right. So I have block M and uh, let's start with the gravity. Um, there's always gravity. And I know it's not accelerating downward, so there must be normal force that's supporting it. Call it N1, because I call the other thing N2. And it's telling me there's this external force, so I better draw that external force, <laughs> otherwise I'm deliberately forgetting something that is explicitly specified in the question. So now, some people might make the mistake of just ending here. As you ask yourself the question, did I draw all the forces? Um, because, you know, it, with uh, everything I've drawn, it's uh, possible to get a rightward acceleration that you're expecting. So I can imagine people ending here, and that would be a mistake. And one technique that I, uh, I've taught that will uh, help you avoid this mistake of basically forgetting the other tension force is uh, you should do something that I'm calling Newton's third law check. This is a check that you should do whenever you see more than one object. If you have two objects or more that are potentially interacting with each other, then for all the internal forces, forces of interaction be between objects in your system, you need to identify action-reaction force pairs. So 
the for Newton's third law check, you go through every single force and you either say, oh, that's an external force, or if you identify that as being internal force, then you uh, find the reaction force pair. And if you've forgotten it, draw it. So normal force N2, that's an external force. It's coming from the table. Gravity, that's external force. It's coming from Earth. This tension force, so you look at this, tension is from the string, which is connected to this mass. So the tension force is an internal force. That means to this action force, there must be a reaction force pair that's uh, equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. Um, so, and, and that's, uh, by the way, how Newton's third law should be used. You, you By identifying two forces as action and reaction force pair, you realize that they can they should be equal in magnitude. But a lot of students do it the other way. You look for equal magnitudes and say they are action reaction. Don't do that. That's not how you're even supposed to use the law. Um, okay, so I did tension here, normal force, external coming from table, mg gravity, external it's coming from earth. And this F, it's an applied force. It's coming from whatever outside agent is who is uh, not a part of your system. So by do, doing this check, I've made sure that I didn't forget the other tension force, which you could have gotten by realizing that there's a string attached to here. But then uh, you might not get that these two are equal in magnitude, uh, which really comes from Newton's third law. OK, so that's uh, all the forces. And uh, yeah, clearly. OK, so let's do it this way. Um, I have um, so block. 2M has uh, three forces, uh, N2, uh, normal force N2, gravity 2, and G, tension T. Um, I think uh, if I say this much, it's clear what directions they are. So I want to uh, spell it out. Block M has four forces, normal force N1, gravity M, G, tension, T, and apply the force F. Uh, the two tensions are, T, T, are equal in magnitude, action, reaction, force pairs. Uh, N2 is equal to 2 times uh, 2 mg, and uh, N1 is equal to mg. Um, I don't think I mind it too much if you missed these um, as part of problem solving, you're going to get it. Oh, wait, I forgot a force. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to do to avoid this other than just reading the question carefully. Because it, it mentions the friction coefficient. So that means you, if you've forgotten friction force, you've forgotten something. When the question actually gives you friction coefficient, you need to have a friction force. So. <laughs> has five forces. Uh, uh, oh, and uh, friction force FK, uh, kinetic friction. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just thinking about the normal force made me realize, oh, yeah, I, if there was some friction, I wouldn't care about normal force at all. Uh, so, okay, so that's uh, my free body diagram, the first step in standard strategy, and it says, assuming they slide, find the magnitude of the tension force, yeah, yeah, follow the Newton's law. So I've done step number one, uh, let's do the remainder of the steps below. I'm gonna just uh, make a space for B. Do a little time check, I think I have, what, 12 minutes left? Um, so did step number one. Step number two, I need to uh, define my coordinate axis. Uh, mostly so, uh, defining it so that my x direction is along the direction of acceleration. So here, just regular straight axis works fine for both of them. Uh, whenever you have more than one object, you do have freedom to pick different axis directions. But here, I can just do the same for both of them. Okay, step number two. Step number three, I need to break forces into components. Think there's nothing to break down. They are all along the x or y direction. Step number four, I need to write Newton's second law equation. So here I'm going to potentially need four equations. Uh, yeah. So I need one for 2m in the x and, or two, for 2m in the x and y direction. 
I need a 2, 4, M in the X and Y direction. So let me just uh, write them out all out in one go, trying to make sure I don't forget anything. So in the X direction, um, the acceleration of 2M will be the same acceleration the whole thing is moving. So that acceleration is equal to net force, just the tension, there's no other force, divided by the mass of the object that you've drawn free body diagram for, 2M. Along the Y direction, um, the, the acceleration is zero, that's how we pick the coordinate axis. That's equal to the sum of forces, N2 minus 2MG, divided by mass of the object, 2M. Okay, let me write down the other two equations for small mass m, or the, just m, not 1m. <laughs> Along the x direction, uh, well, there are a lot of forces. Uh, so acceleration is a, let me write down all those, a lot of forces. I have F, apply the force in the positive x direction, and I'm subtracting tension force that's going in the negative direction, and subtracting again the friction force, which is going in the negative direction. All of that divided by mass of the object I have drawn free body diagram for. Along the y direction, I have zero acceleration is equal to the normal force minus mg divided by m. Um, let me do a quick solution here because uh, for a couple of equations, I see that um, um, it so in terms of only one unknown, so I can just quickly solve for it. Like this n2 here, it, this equation here, it's in terms of just one unknown n2. So from this, I know n2 is equal to 2mg. And same deal here, I can quickly get n1 is equal to mg. So let me just do that. So if uh, I see n1 or n12 anywhere, I can just use this to plug in. So ignoring these two equations, it looks like I have one, two equations and um, they didn't give us the acceleration. That's an unknown that we have to solve for. They are asking us for tension, so that's unknown. And I'm, okay, apply the force is known, but we are not given this. So um, we have three unknowns and two equations. So this is where um, you have to think through a little bit. So, you know, standard strategy gave you this system of four equations and it wasn't enough. Uh, th this will be a common situation in a lot of problem solving where um, you have to add in a little bit of additional information. And here, that additional information is this thing that I noted when I realized it's dealing with the kinetic friction. So I need um, the expression for friction, which will allow me to relate the unknown friction here in terms of this known uh, normal force N1. So I'm going to use that. So, okay, I have, um, so they are not asking for acceleration, right? Um, yeah, I, I think it, it will be quicker to do it by hand than bring up a sage math at this point. So let me just do this by hand. Um, I think I can plug this in here uh, along with this to get rid of, so basically I have two unknowns, acceleration and tension. So let me do it that way. I'm going to rewrite this equation so that acceleration is equal to F minus tension minus plugging in this and this I have mu mg divided by m and the other equation acceleration is equal to T over 2m I can eliminate acceleration by setting these right hand sides equal to each other so I have F minus T minus mu mg divided by m is equal to t over 2m. Um, let me collect t on the same side, uh, collecting like term. So I have plus um, t over m, um, collecting the like term here again. I have 1 half plus 2 over 2, so 3 halves over m times t. Solving for t, I get t is equal to 2m over 3 times f minus mu mg over m. Oh, m's cancel. Okay, so let me write this down. t is equal to 2 over 3 times f minus mu times m times g. Uh, I guess that's it. No more division. 
Yeah, so that's it. Um, <laughs> it's a kind of close call between which is a quicker that or um, bringing up sage math. Yeah, so I have uh, how much time? Five minutes? Yeah. So, yeah, this is a long question. Um, <laughs> they say, all right, um, force is no longer being applied. Uh, find the maximum angle at which. Okay. So I think if I'm doing this um, properly, I probably won't be able to do it in five minutes. So let me do it the uh, quick way. Uh, for the next five minutes or so, you're not going to hear me explain a lot of stuff because I'm just trying to finish this question within the very time, uh, strict time limit. So let me just uh, work in silence. <laughs> um, I have uh, uh, it's solution to your problem. Okay. And I've skipped uh, the step of um, uh, breaking down forces into components because I've done it so many times I can just do it in my head. Um, just so that it's not confusing other people later. Here I'm defining this as my plus x. All right, I have one, two, three, four equations. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need this. Um, so, all right. I think I can eliminate tension. And then here I have n1 is mg cosine theta. So the single equation with the tension eliminated is zero is equal to two mg I think that makes sense. It's the, it's the friction on one body that has to hold up both the masses. So I think I haven't made a mistake which is possible when I'm rushing and trying to do this quickly. Um, so the way to solve this is to try to combine uh, trick things into a single trick equation, move this over, mu cosine theta is equal to combine these two, three sine theta, move this over. So I have tangent theta is equal to mu over three, where theta is arc term of mu over three, assuming it's, you know, um, uh, acute angle. Um, so theta max is equal to arc term mu divided by three. Uh, yeah. At the maximum angle found above, what is the magnitude of tension force? Uh, I gotta track back and use uh, this thing here. So, um, it's the simplest one because the other one has other unknowns. T is equal to 2mg sine theta. So the simplest answer would be T is equal to 2 times m times g times the sine of arc tangent of mu over 3. And do I have a couple minutes? Uh, I can draw the triangle if I have a minute. Uh, might not be enough time, but let me just get started. Uh, so if you draw the triangle, so this is the angle theta, and it's an angle such that its tangent is mu over three. So mu three, this will give you the tangent. So the hypotenuse is mu squared plus nine. So the sine of this angle should be, uh, yeah, so I think I can do this. Uh, is equal to two times m times g times sine, which is opposite, mu divided by square root of mu squared plus nine. Okay. 
<laughs> so um, yeah, so I, as I keep saying, you know, 20 minutes is a really tight amount of time. And basically, um, so for any part of the question, if you have to do what I did for CND, which is where you are. Um, so the work that you're keeping, it doesn't have to be a well-organized work while you are working through the question. Because organizing it uh, takes time. You can organize it later. So for the purpose of this question demonstration, I'm not going to organize what I attach because I kind of need to end the session at one. <laughs> but um, um, so after having given your answers, if you want to take some time to organize your work and then attach, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's, um, th that's what I recommend and expect you to do. So let me just, uh, uh, I think I'm starting. So yeah, that's uh, the um, one more of the timed assessment, the freeform timed assessment questions. And there are other ones that I've done uh, in the past. Take a look at them. So I guess what I would say is, um, so I haven't done all the questions. So there's certainly a chance that you would see a question that um, you haven't seen me done, but with the uh, more number of questions that I've done and more number of questions that you've seen, the chance gets uh, large, becomes greater that you will get lucky where you see a question in the timed assessment that you've seen done. And even though you might not remember everything perfectly, um, I think anything, the kind of, anything that's more familiar is something that's uh, uh, less difficult and less anxiety inducing. So, uh, so watch the videos uh, and uh, it, it, use them as practice. Um, videos are both useful as a way to show you some of the questions that are in the pool that where your question might come from. One, two, uh, one of the model solutions. And with these demos, the model solution might be slightly flawed because. Uh, let me just put this. Uh, Sorry, I didn't have the time to organize a C and D work. For you, you should organize. <laughs> um, uh, so the model answers, they are somewhat flawed because um, I'm doing it within the same time limit that you are. And I think some of those have some mistakes here and there, which I note. Uh, in the text around it, I will tell you if there are any mistakes, what the mistakes are. <laughs> it's a little harder to fix in the video, but I can put text around it that describes the mistakes. So, so yeah, this is uh, one of the questions that you might see for part two of the freeform timed assessment. That, um, that, and again, if you need to modify or add work later, uh, this is how you do it. Access the item again, go to add work and not review work. This button will show you a screen where you can actually change it.